Ketchup, the most popular condiment in North America, was once actually used as a medicine. In the US, 97% of households report having a bottle in their refrigerator. But how did a simple sauce become so loved by the Western world? Ketchup's true origins are anything but American. Ketchup comes from the Hoikin Chinese word ki tia, the name of a sauce derived from fermented fish. It is believed that traders brought the fish sauce from Vietnam to southeastern China. It is said that it is likely the British who encountered ketchup in Southeast Asia, returned home, and tried to replicate the fermented dark sauce. This probably happened in the late 17th and early 18th centuries, as evidence provided by a recipe published in 1732, written by Richard Bradley. But this was certainly not the ketchup we would recognize today. Most British recipes called for ingredients like mushrooms, walnuts, oysters, or anchovies in an effort to reproduce the savory taste first encountered in Asia. Mushroom ketchup was even proclaimed favorite by author Jane Austen. These early ketchups were mostly thin and dark and often added to soups, sauces, meat, and fish. At this point, ketchup lacked one important ingredient, tomatoes. The history of ketchup is almost 300 years old, but the first time the ketchup we know and love was recorded in history was in the early 17th century or 1812 to be exact. The first known published tomato ketchup recipe appeared in 1812, written by scientist and horticulturalist James Mies, who referred to tomatoes as love apples. His recipe contained tomato pulp, spices, and brandy, but lacked vinegar and sugar. Ketchup's success was due in part to the fact that it could be kept up for a year. Still, preservation of tomato ketchups proved to be challenging. Since tomato growing season was short, makers of ketchup had to solve the problem of preserving tomato pulp year-round. Some producers handled and stored the product so poorly that the resulting sauce contained contaminants like bacteria, spores, yeast, and mold, leading the French cookbook author Pierre Blot to call commercial ketchup filthy and decomposed in 1866. Early investigations into commercial ketchup found it contained potentially unsafe levels of preservatives, namely coal tar, which was added in order to achieve the color of red. Sodium benzoate was also added to help with spoilage. By the end of the 19th century, benzoates were considered particularly harmful to health. At the forefront of the war against them, Dr. Harvey Washington Wiley maintained that the use of these harmful preservatives was unnecessary if high quality ingredients were used and handled properly. Wiley partnered with a Pittsburgh man named Henry J. Hines, who started producing ketchup in 1876. Hines was also convinced that American consumers did not want chemicals in their ketchup. In answer to the benzoate controversy, Hines developed a recipe that used ripe red tomatoes, which have more of a natural preservative called pectin and was better than what other manufacturers used. This dramatically increased the amount of vinegar and reduced the risk of spoilage. Heinz began producing preservative-free ketchup and soon dominated the market. In 1905, the company had sold 5 million bottles of ketchup. Ketchup is loved and used by many people all over the world for various purposes, mainly related to food. Most doctors today will tell you to stay away from it due to the health hazards that it poses, but 150 years ago, they would have prescribed it for you. Yes, that's right. Tomato ketchup was once believed to have medicinal properties and was used as a form of medication to cure diarrhea, indigestion, rheumatism, and jaundice. In 1834, Dr. John Cook Bennett added tomatoes to ketchup and claimed it could cure those diseases. Dr. John Cook was a trusted doctor who briefly acted as the mayor of Nauvoo, Illinois in the 1840s. However, creating the ketchup medicine scam was not the only dark side he had. Bennett was excommunicated from the church for adultery on May 11, 1842. Rumors of adultery, homosexuality, and unauthorized polygamy emerged. Contemporary sources indicate that Bennett used his trust position as a doctor to allay fears in women in which he attempted to seduce. He would tell them he could give them abortions by administering different medicines if they became pregnant. While Bennett was mayor, he was caught in numerous private sexual relations with women in the city. On the other hand, Bennett created a somewhat genius marketing ploy that led to ketchup being known as a medicine for almost 20 years. Essentially, tomato sauce and other related products were sold as a form of medication. Not surprisingly, this ketchup medication was somewhat popular because people loved the taste of it. Later, he expanded production and even made ketchup into pills, which seemed even more legit. We've all eaten ketchup and know that it's clearly nonsense, but until 1850, people were flocking to ketchup to cure their illnesses. Sooner or later, the scam would have to come to a crumbling end, and that's exactly what happened. The reason the Bennett's medicine endeavor eventually ended was because 
imitators started making their own bootleg ketchup medicine and made even crazier claims, saying it cured scurvy and amended bones. People eventually started calling the bluff. I mean, imagine someone mimicking your product and saying it basically gives you superpowers. In the end, it was pretty obvious that the whole ketchup medicine was just a money play. I mean, don't get me wrong, tomatoes do carry antioxidants and vitamin C, but don't expect to chug a bottle of ketchup and feel like a million bucks after. Trust me, especially if you're not already sick. So, there you have it. Ketchup's history and how it was a real medicine back in the day. If you like this video, please make sure you like and subscribe as we will have content releasing all the time and giveaways for you, the viewers, as appreciation. See you in the next video.